have a good time and enjoy something that I like doing. Okay. So it, I've been licensed, I think to be exact, it's about 23 years. Okay. And it has been a wonderful journey. Oh, it's been quite a journey, yes. Licensed for about 23 years now. I maintain that license because I still use it. Okay. Help and we'll be right back. Okay. Now, we, in our society, we have a... We've got you here. Okay. Right? Yes. And now you mentioned that you have to work we here. We can avoid mm -hmm. that by using our proper posture. Okay. okay? So putting your feet together. bone length. Wow. We weren't going to do it, they right? Didn't, they didn't see. We could talk a little bit more, not only about the local United by Beauty, but by the national that we're governed under, which is the National Beauty Cultures League. Next time somebody pisses you off when you're on the road for road rage, because everybody can relate to that. I okay. know I can. <laughs> okay, you can totally relate to that. Um, notice, instead of using your energy to cuss them out and... You have to have a certain level of knowledge already. And so sometimes it's not a good match. And so I need to have a talk so I can understand, you know, what your goals are to see if it is in, in alignment. Today, I have the pleasure of speaking with Elise Neal, who is the proprietor of <laughs> Madison's Hair and Beauty Salon here in London, England. A beautiful Afrotherapy salon. And I'm able to speak with the proprietor and head uh, stylist here at Afrotherapy. Mr. Joseph Kajo. Thank you for having us today, Joseph. TV uh, broadcasters and news stations really we really want to know what's going on with scams. And unfortunately, we end up being the scam reporters a lot of times. It just boils down to fraud. Kristen, kind of elaborate what it is and what your passion is in the hair industry. Hair, you have this like creative flow, and I'm discovering that mine is being, you know, heavily, heavily. <laughs> atrophied while I'm at home. And I said, really? I said, what did you feel about it? She said, I didn't know children and teenagers were homeless as well. Yeah. I said, yes, if their parents are homeless, they're homeless. The other parts of the country were healthy and they could pitch yeah. in and help and we could drive funds and we could get um, short-term cash in the hands of people who needed it. But then we send it off to the family. They get all excited. They open their box and inside their box, there's, there's products and brushes and sometimes some presents and wonderful things to keep them educated and a whole booklet. After my diagnosis and already lost the front part of my hair, I had no other choice than to shave it all completely off. When my hair fall, first started falling out, it, my, my scalp was so painful. Hi, Miss Lola. Can you please tell us a little about yourself? Hi, Stephanie. I was inspired at a very young age to become a hairstylist. Even before I knew what a hairstylist was, I had issues with hair loss as a young girl, and I felt the stigma of being a young girl in school with hair issues. And well, um, two things that, that you just mentioned that I want to call out. And one of them is your description of the workshop is the same description that you hear everywhere. No matter what part of the country you're in, no matter what country you're in, because we're also global in 26 countries outside the U.S. And how that came about, please. That was really a blessing and an honor. I wrote that poem back when the Women of Faith Conference was the first time it was held here in San Antonio, Texas, okay. and noted uh, publisher and author and conference speaker Thelma Wells. Wow. I wasn't going to completely do it. First, I shaved the top off and I was going to give myself a hair replacement unit. And I did. And that still wasn't it. So the way we've, we've tested it is obviously kind of... Um, it's a survey that, you know, mm -hmm. individual takes before and after, and some preliminary numbers are very encouraging, um, especially in the younger population, which, again, is at a higher risk. Um, unfortunately, for, um, you mentioned suicide being the 11th cause of death, mm -hmm. death in general, you know, but for ages 10 to 34, it's the second. It was not your fault. Yes. I'm sorry for allowing others to hurt you. Yes. And you're worthy. Yes. Those are some powerful, powerful. words. Oh, I got chills. I My uh, message to women is don't believe the lie of the devil. If God has told you yes. that 
uh, and giving you a promise that he was going to do something for you, stand on the promise yes. of, of God and do not shrink back. Do not believe the lies of the devil yes. because seasons do change. 